Okay, this is going to be a really quick uh, tutorial on making this text, um, actually making this text crash into the max text and having the max text crumble. We're going to be using uh, Math FX. It's the new dynamic um, uh, engine for 3D Studio Max. And here you, ha you can see over here that I have the um, toolbar. If you don't see that, you can right click and bring up the Max's XF toolbar and then dock it over to the side. We're going to be using that and we're also going to be using a um, plugin, uh, well actually a Max script, which is going to be called uh, Fractor, Fracture Veroni. And let me show you what the end result looks like. Um, So it's pretty basic. Um, hopefully the uh, screen capture will capture that so you can see it. So uh, we're just going to be doing that. You can play with the parameters, the speed, and a bunch of other stuff just in case, uh, you know, to get it going to where you want it to go. Um, first thing is my units are set up to real world, real world scale unit set up. And here we have system units set up to centimeters. And then I set up to, to meters because I wanted to make this uh, like a big wall of text and if I zoom let me go to the maximize this if I zoom out until you see the one meter for my grid so this is like one two three this is like four meters tall this text and it's about um, let's go to the side view I can turn the need to turn the grid on for that and for the side view for the side it's about I could measure this with the, with the tape and these once again down here you can see this is the like, grid to one meter so this is one, one two three four meters tall and a little bit wider a little about I have about a half meter wide okay now this text these text objects were just created using 3d studio max text and then adding a um, um, adding a bevel modifier on it and you can see here if I zoom in they have a small bevel on them and then uh, before I run the simulation I collapse them down to an edible poly so that's what we got going here okay just some text objects that are, have a and I have a light set up just simple uh, another tip is you should make sure that you put your materials first before you uh, continue to start fracturing it so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fracture this pre-fracture this text. Um, now, what I'm, a smart move would be is to make a copy of this, which I will do. I'm just going to make a copy of this, a clone, clone this, make a copy, call it whatever. You, I'm just going to call it uh, text copy for now, and then I'm going to um, hide this copy. Do it for two reasons. There's no undo with this fracture. Uh, and see, I got the text zero one selected, and now I got the text co uh, text copy. There, now the text copy is selected. There's no undo, so if I don't like how it fractures, um, I could always uh, change it, um, you know, restart over. Also, if this happened to be animated, um, I could swap out. I could link the fractured pieces and the max text to a dummy, animate them both, and and at the moment of the fracture. I could swap the visibility with the visibility track um, so I could, you know, easily have the, the, the whole text just basically disappear instantly and then the fractures come in right before the simulation and then we see, see it falling apart. But in this case, I'm just going to do it for a backup. I'm going to hide that. So I have that hidden object in case I want to uh, start over. And uh, so now let's, before we do anything else, we just need to break this up into many pieces. Now the Mac scripts are easy to uh, install. You don't even really install them. You just put them in your in your 3D Studio Max root folder, uh, programs, Autodesk 2012 scripts. Here we go, and you can see I have a fracture. Later on, I'm going to be using Kaboom, but I have the fracture Veroni script in there, and you can see the link on where to download that. And now um, have this, uh, to run it, just go to Mac script, Max script, hit run and select it from the list, say OK, or open, 
And now I need to pick my object I'm going to fracture. And I'm going to pick that. And now it's asking me how many parts do I want to break this up in. Um, I'm just going to do 100. Um, and then I'm just going to, this is, you know, for materials. You can look at the actual videos on how to use this. I'm not going to spend much time. Um, I just want to get this uh, real simple. Uh, you can actually fracture it into uh, fracture it once and then pick a section and refracture it into smaller pieces to make it look more realistic. And then you can give each color, each fractures color a uh, different color to make selection easier. But in this case, I'm just going to pick my text, give it a number. Uh, the more parts, the smaller the chunks are going to be. And I'm going to give it about 100. Um, and I'm just going to say, yeah, well, that's pretty much what I need. And I'm just going to say break that up into a uh, hundred small pieces. Oh, wait, one more thing. I don't want the uh, box centers. I want the volume cell centers. There we go. And I'm going to say break it up. It's going to take a minute depending on your processor and your power. Breaking. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. Now it's broken up. And you can see in my front viewport all the pieces that it's been broken up into. Now, um, for now, I could actually just close this. And now what I want to do is now I'm going to set up my objects for my simulation. Now I'm going to be running a simulation on this whole object, on all these little pieces here. So I'm just going to select them all. At this point I don't want to select my ground plane. I have all those pieces selected. Now I'm going to go to my max, max FX toolbar and I'm going to tell it what kind of uh, objects these need to be in the simulation. But it's, these are going to be uh, dynamic rigid bodies. Well, I'm not going to animate this. It's going to be animate completely with the um, with the dynamics dynamic system. Now, this next one I would choose um, for objects. Well, I am going to choose this later on for the actual actual text that is kinematic. I'm animating it, and then it's going to uh, affect or be affected by the dynamic by the dynamic simulation. And this is a static rigid body, which I'm going to add later on to the plane. Um, but I'm just going to do, do select as dynamic rigid bodies, and I've done that. And um, right now, it's added some bounding boxes in here, but these bounding boxes aren't going to really be, you can see they're, they're, they're crossing, crossing across the geometry. So I need to change those bounding boxes. And I can do that by in my uh, toolbar here. And if I go to edit, once again, I hit the, uh, the properties, the dialog display, the tools dialog, and I'm going to go to edit and I need, I need to change these settings and uh, they are dynamic rigid body which you saw me just set up if I wanted to change that I could do that here and then um, down in the presets um, I want these to act like uh, concrete so I need to set that set that preset and I could do custom preset custom uh, settings here uh, physical material properties you know friction how much it bounces but for this concrete is going to be fine and then I just need to go down here and under mesh type, I don't want these to be convex. I want these actually to be the original geometry. And you can, you hopefully you saw that it changed that. Now the actual bounding boxes are actually on the geometry instead of like simplified, uh, simplified bounding boxes. And with that done, um, and I had to do it all at once. I had to select all these and do it through here because there's multiple objects. Um, now I can actually just close it for now. And now I'm going to set up my ground plane. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do this because it does have I have my ground my ground plane selected. It does have an option uh, to just use an um, invisible ground plane. But I'm just going to do this just so we can see how to set up other types. And you can see set this as a static rigid body. Once I do that, it's going to add a mass over here. You can see it's going to add a mass effects uh, modifier on that. And then if I want, I can go in here and uh, and adjust that. But for now, I don't even need to. It's set up for static rigid body. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now the next thing I need to do is I'm going to select my other piece of text over here. And then um, this is, once again, a piece of text that's been uh, collapsed down to edible poly after I put the, uh, the bevel modifier on it. And now what I need to do is, um, it doesn't probably matter if I animate this first or animate this uh, after. Um, so I'm just going to animate this 
starting at frame 20, I'm going to, let's say 25, I'm going to put a uh, uh, position key here, just right click on, on the little bar here, track bar, and then I'm going to go to frame, oh, let's say 100, and we are going to turn on auto key, and we're just going to slide that over, so it looks like it crashes into our text. Okay, so now that's animated, right? Now what we want to do is, I actually want to give myself a little bit more frames here. I'm going to go to frame 150, just so we have a little bit of space after that. And, okay, so that's obviously just, just an text animating and, you know, sliding in, okay? Now, <clears throat> this has to be in the simulation as well, but that's, that's going to be actually... Uh, if we go here, that's going to actually, what kind of a rigid body is it going to be? It's going to be a, like I said before, kinematic rigid body. Select that. And I can go in here and uh, change some settings here if I, if I need to. And actually, I do need to because if you look in my front viewport, my bounding boxes on this are, are the standard convex. I don't want that. I want to change that to the original. So now the bounding boxes uh, are going to be right up against the geometry. Now that's going to um, take longer to calculate than the simpler bounding boxes, but it's going to look more realistic, obviously. So, and I could change density, friction, dynamics, but once again, I think I, I'm just going to uh, pick a, pick a uh, preset, and it's going to be concrete. And, uh, yeah, and for now, that's all I really need to do with that. And um, now I need actually to run the simulation. For this, I'm going to go to my camera that I have set up and uh, come back over to my track bar or my uh, mass effects track bar. I'm going to maximize this view. Now, if I would render this, even though it has the cracks, you can't really see those. But like I said before, if you wanted to use the original and then right before the simulation started, which would be right near around about frame 52, you could you could swap out the visibility of both objects. Uh, and obviously you would have to animate all, put a visibility track on all those small pieces as one. Actually, if you had a dummy object selected to, you can make a dummy object, link all these to a dummy object, and then add the visibility to the dummy object, and that would propagate down to all these pieces. So that's actually a, a, a way you could do that. Um, but for now, I don't care if these pieces uh, appear before because they're not moving and they look just like the original text. You can't really see the cracks anyway uh, uh, when you can in here, but when you render it, you can't. So, um, what I can do is just, uh, at this point, hit start the simulation, see how it, see how it looks. It's going to, oops, I forgot to make a setting. I can tell you why. It crumbled because I forgot to make a setting. So it crumbled. So what I need to do is stop that simulation. <laughs> stop the simulation. This is reset and select all these pieces again. Make sure I only have those pieces selected. I don't want the plane selected. And I forgot to set these as in the start in sleep mode. So, not, it, so they don't actually, uh, nothing, uh, gravity or, in, or n nothing affects them until something actually bumps into them. That's what I forgot to set. So now, instead of them crumbling, <laughs> as soon as they start, if I hit the simulation, I can deselect this, hit the simulation, let's see what happens. There you go, there you go, boom. And now the text actually just gets blasted out of the way with that text. Now that actually looks a little bit too fast for me. Um, I'm going to reset that, and I'm going to slow down this red text, because that's going way too fast. And this is going to be, give me more frames. And we can even start it earlier a little bit. And let's see how that looks. And now it's going slower. And it, remember, I hit the reset simulation to get back to the beginning. Now I can start the simulation. And that looks a little bit better. Even gave you a sound effect there. So now, if I like that, which I think I do, I can go back hit the reset simulation. Now to actually bake that simulation, um, open up the uh, toolbar here, go to, where is it at, I think, tools, 
and now I can hit bake all and that will actually bake that simulation down and make ooh does it uh, I think I made a mistake so let's see yeah I made a mistake oh no there we go yeah. so it actually baked that simulation down so now it actually is uh, if I select my, my pieces here you can see you'll see that they have keyframes each little piece will have a keyframe let me close this yeah you see each little each little piece now has a keyframe so now that's actually baked down and I can actually render that out um, and it was not so hard at all and you can see that they are you know they're, they're not going through the ground if I hit the nice render button here um, that basically I got my text crashing into each other and that's basically it